Adolfo, if you can hear us, you can go ahead and start. Adolfo, are you able to hear the meeting? Delph, are you able to hear us? Pete, can you hear us? I can hear you. Okay. For those of us who are joining us from our travel advisor community, thanks for joining. As you can tell, we're having some technical difficulties today, but that doesn't make our event any less amazing. So hang with us for a couple more minutes. We're trying to get it all dialed in. All right, so uh, can you hear me? Because I can now hear you guys. <laughs> we can hear you, excellent. Well, I'm sorry, this is the latest we've ever started. Um, but, uh, you know, as I say, try, try, try again. So here we are. Hi, everyone, welcome to From Adolfo's Desk Live. Um, uh, today, uh, we have a very, a very special guest that will be joining us in a minute. I just wanted to, uh, uh, once again, thank you all for uh, tuning in as well as for all your support. Uh, I think we had some pretty exciting news today when we shared that we will be getting a uh, second sister to the Mardi Gras and the celebration, uh, which will uh, be joining our fleet. I think it was in 2023. Uh, and we're also gonna be getting another ship from uh, Costa uh, that we are going to uh, put into dry dock, car carnivalize her and bring her and welcome her to our fleet. So exciting news. Um, one other thing that I thought was really interesting is, you know, even though we retired four of our fantasy class ships, by the time the celebration joins the fleet in 2022, we will actually have more capacity than we did uh, back in 2019 because the Mardi Gras and the XL class ships all are about two and a half, two and a half times the size of the fantasy class ship. So just with celebration, we'd be bigger than we were. Uh, before the uh, the retirements and uh, and now with another XL class ship joining the fleet as well as the uh, the um, the Costa ship, uh, we are really really excited about the future. So if we can move to the next slide, since for some reason I can't control this thing. Um, so my very special guest today is uh, Pete Calaro, and he's the Senior Vice President of Brand and Product Marketing. Um, I thought that uh, this was a great time to introduce Pete. Uh, he joined Carnival not that long ago. Um, and, uh, you know, as things are starting to ramp up and we're excited about the restart coming up, um, you know, one of the things that obviously helps drive a lot of the demand, both uh, for, uh, you know, for consumers uh, to drive uh, business into your offices, uh, marketing is going to be key. So, uh, Pete, you want to join us? Hopefully we're not having any more technical difficulties. Can you hear me? I can hear you and I can see you. Awesome. <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much for having me and, um, and nice to virtually meet all of you. Yeah. That, so Pete, um, I was going to say that, uh, you know, our travel partners haven't gotten to really know you. You haven't been at Carnival all that long. And I thought it would be uh, good if you shared a little bit of your history and, you know, kind of what brought you to Carnival. You bet. Happy to do that. Um, well, certainly if you've taken a look at my LinkedIn, you'll see a couple of things that I'll mention. Um, I got my, my lucky break started in marketing and advertising on one of the most iconic brands in history. Learned a lot working on the agency side, um, learned how creativity feeds brands and creates growth for business. Um, but I learned a lot about partnership. Our client at Absolute never treated the agency like a vendor. We were always partners. And I've really taken that uh, to heart and taken it with me over the course of my career. The other thing you'll probably notice that stands out is um, the time that I spent at Coca-Cola. I was there for 15 years. Another lucky, uh, lucky strike for me. Um, uh, never hurts to work on one of the world's most beloved brands, for sure. Um, had a chance to learn a ton there as well. Great brands never rest. They're always looking for ways to innovate and stay relevant. Um, and that's something that, that made an impression on me when I was there. I also had a chance when I was at uh, Coke to experiment with social marketing in the early days 
I built a team there that handled all of the social marketing and media for our North America brands and learned a lot of valuable lessons there that I'm taking uh, into, uh, into the work we're doing at Carnival. Um, what you wouldn't know necessarily from looking at my LinkedIn is that I'm uh, the father of um, three beautiful daughters um, from uh, my, my wife and I are super proud of our family. And we, um, we just, we're, they're funny, they're motivating, they're inspiring. That's Zoe um, on the left side of the screen. Cameron is next to me on the other side. That's my wife, Kelly, and my youngest daughter, Ella. And um, I just, you know, I'm always reminded that all of the work that we do, we, we do for, for our families and, and, um, and they are a priority in my life. Yeah, how old are they? They look like uh, pretty, uh, like, High school, college already, maybe? Yeah, this is a couple of years old. My my oldest daughter is um, she's now like on on her own. She started a career out in, in Denver, Colorado. Um, my middle daughter is a, a senior, uh, an upcoming senior at the University of jo uh, of Georgia, and Ella just graduated high school and is about to start her college career. So they're almost out of the house. Wow. So well, you don't look old enough to have kids that old. <laughs> yeah. I, well, let's see. Well, I, should I get close in on the gray hairs on the side? Well, I'm sure you dye that in there just to look distinguished. Yeah. Somehow. <laughs> All right, let's move to the next slide. And who's driving this? You, do you have the controls, Pete? I, I'm, I'm driving. Because usually I feel like I have to be a control freak because uh, and I feel very... So just for the audience out there, just so you know, we've been... I've literally tried on one, two, three, four devices to connect to this thing. I kept getting hung up on by Zoom uh, and uh, my Mac froze, my computer at work's not working correctly with Zoom and finally got it on my iPad, but I can't uh, drive the presentation. So uh, it's gonna be a little clunky, but I think we'll make it work. You just have to trust me, Adolfo. No, I do. Um, so the... Uh, um, you know, the role that you're in is obviously a really big role. Um, it's, you know, we're a big brand and, uh, you know, along, you know, when you hear marketing, you, you think of so many different things. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, your role here at Carnival and what you're responsible for um, and your yeah. teams? You bet. Uh, well, I, as Adolfo mentioned, I joined in uh, 2019 in September, kind of for the world changed um, significantly for all of us. Uh, so I guess the lesson there is don't take me to Las Vegas with you. Um, <laughs> but my team is fantastic. Um, we've got four main disciplines, if you will, within uh, Carnival Marketing. Um, the first is research and insights. Everything starts with understanding the consumer, um, not just the guest, but folks who aren't our guests yet. And that's important. Um, so we do a lot of research. Uh, we track the competition there, and those insights fuel the other team. So on the right side of the screen, you'll see performance marketing. Think of that as um, all that is measurable in marketing today, which every day that increases some. So media.com, CRM, and of course, e-commerce. Um, on the left side, the brand team. Uh, so this is a team that's responsible for strategy and concepting around advertising, working with uh, some really talented agency partners. Um, we do a lot of work with partners. Um, so Shaq and Guy and, and others, Emerald. Um, so they manage all of that work. And we've got a fantastic and extremely talented creative services team that is not just a, a complement to our external partners, but they drive a lot of the creativity that you see um, not just in our marketing, but on board, um, on, on the website. Um, they're really, really talented bunch of, of artists. Yeah, I would, I would echo that. We work uh, a lot of time, you know, a lot of times uh, in getting some of the stuff that we put out with, to our travel agency partners. Um, we work with Hugo and his team and you're right, they are super talented, get things done quick and uh, I know in times like this where staffing is down, they're still able to do a lot for us. And we really appreciate everything that they do to help us support our travel partners with their uh, advertising needs. Yeah, you bet. So 
we go into the next slide. Yeah, I, I thought maybe I would talk a little bit about some of the, I don't know, the approach that I bring to, uh, to marketing in general. Um, one of the things that I've uh, really learned, and I'll say it the hard way, is that if you jump into just executing marketing right away, um, you, you make a big mistake. And, and so I really believe in the fundamentals of strategy first. Um, strategy in terms of like, where do you want to play and how do you want to win? Those are the two key questions that you should be able to answer before you move to the second stage, which for, for us in creative marketing and brand marketing is always about the concept, the idea, right? Um, what's the idea that's going to resonate with people, with your target? It could be a concept or an innovation. It could be a big idea that establishes your product or your brand or your service, or maybe even something that changes the way people think about you. Um, but it's important to arrive at that and make sure that the entire organization understands it and is fluent in talking about that idea. Um, yeah, Pete, one then, thing that I, that I think I just wanted to point out before you move on um, is that a lot of the things that you're talking about that you're thinking about for Carnival, these are things that the travel agent partners, because a lot of the people on here are owners or managers or might run the marketing department. Um, at their travel agency. Um, I, I think that, you know, one of the things I want to advise them is that listen to the things you're talking about, because this doesn't just apply to Carnival or big corporations. This applies to every single business. Uh, and, you know, you are, your travel agency, whether you're an independent contractor or you're a franchisee or you're, a, you know, uh, somebody who works at an agency, uh, these things apply to you as well. So, so take note of these things, because these are really important. I thought that's why this this marketing one was particularly useful now as we start with the restart and start thinking about how you go to market and some of the tips and uh, ideas that you can garner from, uh, from Pete's presentation. So sorry to interrupt. No, no, not at all. I mean, these are, you know, some of the lessons I've taken from having the good fortune of working on brands and businesses that, um, that grow, that have fueled either a leadership position in an industry or have been successfully, you know, a challenger in, in an industry. Um, these are the commonalities, the things that I've tried to take along to ensure um, success for, for Carnival. And, and, and I'm, I'm happy to share more detail on this with anyone who's interested, but, um, you know, certainly these fundamentals are really important. And, and I, I don't mean to like minimize execution. It's huge. This is where the work gets done distributed, where it's measured, where you feed back into the next evolution of strategy, but strategy concepting and execution are the fundamentals that I, that I really believe in. Um, the other is kind of just like the purpose of marketing, like why do we do it? Um, and there's a lot of research and science around this actually that shows in order to grow your business, increase penetration, you've got to be able to do two things well. You've got to be able to create mental availability, as well as physical avail availability. Um, so think of this almost like making sure customers can think of your brand when they are involved in thinking about a purchase and access your brand or product. It's not good enough to do one versus the other. You've got to do both. Um, so we try to apply this to all of the thoughts that we have about um, keeping the Carnival brand fresh and building it. But the real purpose is that mental availability piece. Now, you could argue .com is physical digital availability, but the business that all of you run is the physical availability um, of our product and brand. So they're symbiotic. They need to travel together and, 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 um, and they need to work together. Um, and of course, you know, kind of more traditionally thinking about the funnel, if we're not creating customers who are aware and have a favorable impression at the top of the funnel, it's very, very difficult to get people to evaluate our product um, and then eventually make a purchase. But this goes for all products and services. You've got to start by filling the funnel with people who were not previously aware or previously considering 
in order to get them all the way through to purchase. So we do think about this quite a lot. Obviously, it's a big part of how we market digitally, um, but our job as brand marketers is to create that generation at the top of the, the funnel. Yeah. One of the things that you know, you were talking a little earlier about, you know, talking to our our, our past guest, but obviously something that's really important is, uh, you know, growing the brand, and that's the top of the funnel. That's where you get new people in that weren't necessarily considering cruise before. And you know, I have to tell you that the travel agencies, in particular, the travel partners out there, they are great at that. They're the ones. If you look at the percentage of new to cruise or new to brand uh, from our travel agency partners, it is significantly higher. Right. Uh, and when you look at a direct channel, for example, so they are helping us uh, with that, you know, upper funnel and, and helping us drive, uh, you know, make the pie bigger, I guess. Uh, That's right. Forward. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think going forward for me, it's really important to understand that consumer journey even more than we currently do. And I, I mentioned earlier, we know a lot about our past guests within the walls of, co of, of carnival marketing. We don't know that much. We know a little bit. We don't know as much about consumers who aren't yet under the umbrella. So understanding right. that journey, and maybe we can help each other to, to do that, um, that'll, I, I think that will really help us succeed in, in driving more through the funnel. Um, maybe just one last thing to say on the kind of the mental availability piece. That's really where branding comes in. And I, I don't think it's any, it's not, not an accident that the largest companies in the world um, are really thoughtful and careful about the brands that they have built. Um, they are, um, you know, they're quite protective of it. Um, and that's not to say the only way to be successful in business is to emphasize your brand. Um, there are a lot of industrial companies that you don't see on this list, but when it comes to um, being relatable to consumers, um, building a, a, a strong brand is a big part of it. And um, a qu funny, quick anecdote about uh, Bezos and, and Amazon. He's famously quoted as uh, in the early 2000s as saying, advertising is for companies who are not relevant. And um, it was a bit of a watershed moment in uh, the Super Bowl a couple of years ago when one of my favorite commercials that year was the Alexa commercial where Alexa mm -hmm. had lost her voice and all the celebrities were lending their, uh, their voices to Alexa and who made a cameo in their Super Bowl spot, which you could argue is the, the, the highest profile branding um, event of the year, Jeff Bezos. So it was kind of a moment where tech had to stand up and say, it's not just about the website, the e-com experience, the iPhone product, but it's also about how you, um, how you make people feel about your brand. All right. So you've talked a lot about marketing. Can you talk a little bit about carnival specific stuff? I think uh, our agents would love yeah. to hear about that. Yeah. You bet. Um, one of the things I was just so excited about when uh, I started talking uh, to the team at Carnival about joining was the strength of the work that had been done to date. And so if you think about this notion of mental availability, one of the triggers for that is, is having distinctive assets. And I don't mean differentiation. Differentiation is different. Like differentiation to me is two razor blades, two blades on a razor head versus three. And it's like, at some point- Well, now there's you know, five. <laughs> now there's five. I mean, yeah. who's gonna be the first to six, you know? So that's differentiation and you can, get, um, you can get beat in the differentiation game. If you're distinctive, if you have assets that um, cannot be copied or borrowed, or there's no way for another brand to use that identifying mark to trigger the memory and the mental cue in the consumer's mind, you're, you're really doing an advantage uh, for, your, for your brand and you're going to grow your business. And so our icon is one, our funnel is one thing that we're excited about. We really want 
to establish this as our icon and the icon of fun. Um, it's super strong. You can see it literally from miles away. Um, and it is something that, um, that I think you'll see us do a lot more with um, in our marketing. Uh, so that's one distinctive asset. I think the other is just our positioning. You know, it's hey, can not I just, just say one thing. Can I just yeah, say one thing about our funnel, which I think is really cool? I don't know if you've, you've, I'm sure you must have noticed when you type in cruise uh, on your iPhone, the one of the icons that comes up is actually our funnel, right? Yeah, yeah. It's and it's, we didn't we didn't pay for that. That just got done by awesome. whoever. Created. No, yeah. no, we didn't. We, that was not our doing. That's yeah. like whoever controls the icons at Apple or Samsung or whoever's part of that board, that advisory board. They said that's what cruising is synonymous with this symbol. What's great yeah. about that is no one else can use it because yeah. oftentimes you become a generic. So, you know, Xerox or Kleenex and you can't fend people off. We can fend people off from using uh, from using our funnel. Uh, choose fun. I was just going to say our idea is not just a tagline. There's actually the idea behind it is that this is a call to action, and you have to you kind of have to know what you're getting into when you pick Carnival. You are you are saying I want to come on to uh, a ship, have a vacation that is going to be filled with these kinds of experiences. And this is something we want to give more dimension to, and we will as part of our comeback. I can't reveal any secrets now, but we will continue along with Choose Fund because we think um, that America needs this probably more than ever before. Yeah, for sure. And then maybe just the last distinctive asset that we have that I would like to mention is our relationship with celebrities and partners. We've been doing this for literally for decades and it's a part of our DNA. And I think people, consumers get it. They get the association, um, whether it's Kathy Lee back in the day or what we're doing with, with Guy, um, uh, Guy Fieri now. Um, probably the most high profile and successful so far has been our chief fun officer, Shaquille O'Neal. Um, I'm excited to do more with Shaq because I think even though he's out there representing other brands, we have found a really interesting way of using him. This CFO thing that we've created, he's perfect for it. And um, even though he's out there on Epson and the general insurance and all of this, people remember him as the CFO on board a carnival ship. So we're gonna play more into this going forward um, so you can look forward to more shack work. All right. So, I mean, right now is obviously a pretty challenging time. And uh, I would imagine for a marketer such as yourself, you know, this is, there's some unique opportunities that present themselves. Is there anything you can, any sneak peek you can share with us? Yeah. I, I, that you I, won't I, get in trouble for? <laughs> I, I, I'll probably get in trouble anyway, but I, I do want to share um, because this is a very important inflection point, you know, not just for Carnival, not just for the cruise industry, uh, not just for you all, but for, for travel in general. Um, and, um, you know, as we think Winston Churchill once said, never let a good crisis go to waste. Um, we think this is a moment in time that we need to stand up, raise our hands and take advantage of because People are tired of doing what they've been doing for the last year. They're kind of sick of road trips and staycations and living like a local. Um, and what they want, what they've been missing is what you need after a crisis, whether it's the roaring 20s or the swinging 60s. And that's fun, <laughs> but not just any kind of fun. Psychologists call this type of fun social fun. It's fun with other people and it's something we've all been lacking. But for our brand, we're perfectly precision engineered for this. This is what you come on board. This is what choose fun is about. That's what I was saying earlier. Like you have to actively choose fun when you, when you come to, to a carnival cruise. So our goal is to create advertising, marketing, social, performance, everything that's driven around this strategy. This is not a consumer facing line or language. 
But as you see things coming out uh, from, from my team over the course of the next 12 months, it's going to be aimed at giving America what we need right now and what Carnival delivers better than anyone else. And that's social fun. And it's going to come to life in some really cool ways. So uh, just stay tuned. I think you'll, I think you'll love it. Well, you know, there are, like I said earlier, a lot of the, the people on this uh, webinar are owners or maybe around marketing departments. Can you share a little bit how you think that Carnival's marketing can help them in their business? Yeah, absolutely. Listen, um, I do go back to this idea of um, casting a wider net. Over the last year, just to sort of keep the lights on, we've had to focus a lot on our past guests. We've done a lot with our CRM, um, our email marketing, a lot on .com to just keep people engaged in social. We've got a challenge going forward of filling more capacity than we had before the crisis. And I think Adolfo mentioned that earlier. Um, so we want to we want to bring new people into the into this franchise, into this experience. And as he also pointed out, we know very, very well and clearly that that means coming through the, the trade, this really important channel that we have. Um, so as we're building marketing, as we're building advertising campaigns and using mass media again, do know that we understand and fully expect that those customers are going to have to learn about our product and our brand from somewhere credible. And they're going to have to trust the, the, the group that is, that's giving them that information. And we know that's you. So we are trying to cast a wider net to fill that funnel at the top and drive the business um, through, uh, through, through you all, through a critical channel to conversion. Yeah. What, one of the things uh, that I, you know, realized during this you know, last year and a half um, is that <clears throat> you, you definitely have, you know, because things have gotten so complicated, you know, pause after pause, uh, you know, protocols, you know, vaccinated versus non-vaccinated, all these different things that are going on. We're finding that, um, you know, uh, consumers are really now looking at travel agents as their expert and they're more important than ever. Uh, given how complex everything has been and continues to be, at least for the foreseeable future. And, um, you know, the, you know, as, as uh, Pete was saying, the, the, the value you bring, we, you know, is, is really important to us. And the work that we do uh, is, is created to help drive that business to all of you, because we know how important you are uh, to, our, uh, to our success. And, uh, you know, I really thank you, know, Pete, for, for the things that you guys do. Uh, always putting in a travel agent call to action um, and, uh, and, you know, really helping us, uh, you know, support this very, very important uh, group of, uh, you know, people that are very valuable to us. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's really our pleasure. We, we know how critical it is and, um, and we want to continue to get better at it. So, um, so I hope we, I hope this is the beginning of a dialogue and not just us sharing some, some thoughts on marketing. Yeah. Well, speaking of dialogue, I think uh, we have some time for Q and A. Um, and uh, I think our, our, I always call him our Vanna White, Jerry is gonna read off some of the, the questions that are in our chat. Hi, uh, do you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, the first question uh, we have is after a time, like we just finished with the pandemic, what are the important things to remember as travel advisors are putting together their marketing plans uh, moving forward? Good question. Yeah, look, I, I think that one of the things we try to keep in mind is that um, not all consumers are in the same state of mind right now. Right, so you've got some folks who are cruise ready, man. They're just like ready to pack their bags and, and go. They just, they want, to, they want us to tell them it's time to go. But then you've got a group that's cruise reluctant. Um, some of them just need the information to kind of get them over the hurdle. And, um, and to Adolfo's point, like just explaining some of 
the ins and outs, the details of vaccinated cruisers or non-vaccinated cruisers, that may be enough for a small group of, uh, a group of people. We don't know how small it is yet. And then there are folks who are just going to want to wait and see. They, they need to, we're calling them vacation procrastinators, right? And I don't know if you can lift and apply that to everyday business, but understanding that what we've been through has definitely had an effect on everyone, but to varying degrees. It's yep. not like everyone just snaps back to where they were in February of 2019. Um, so being aware of that and then starting to understand what the insights and implications of that um, are, that'll be a discovery we go through in the next few months. Great. Next one, Jerry. Uh, so next one is in the past, uh, this is from Leanne. Uh, in the past, Carnival has had the perceived reputation as a party brand. This is both positive and negative. How are you approaching this perception in your marketing strategy? Yeah, I think it's a great question. It's something that we talk about all the time. I think what we want to do in general is we don't want to lose the positive association with what um, being fun and having a party is about. It's up to us though, to fill that with the right meaning. And you do that by being consistent about how you talk about, how you show the fun experiences on board a carnival ship. So one thing I will tell you is that um, our next campaign is really going to celebrate a lot of those experiences and present them in a way where you can attach the word party, but you get all of the positive associations with it. That's our job as marketers, is to change the way people think about the brand. And we can still do that without losing the positivity that's, in, that's associated with what a party is, it really brings to you as a consumer. Pete, I don't know if you remember when you uh, came into the office, when you were interviewing, you and I had a chance to meet. And I don't know if you remember, I asked you that very question. I said, this is something that baggage we've carried along for a, a long time. You know, when you think of it on the, in the negative, on the negative uh, side of it and, you know, what would, you know, what would your approach to be? So thanks. That's really, uh, it's really helpful because it's something that we live with, you know, and our travel partners are aware of it. They, those that have been on board the cruise, our cruises in the last few years, uh, you know, definitely understand how the product has evolved over the years um, and how having fun does not necessarily mean, you know, a naked toga party throughout, you know, around the, around a ship or something. It, it's, it's much more about, like you said, the fun experiences that we offer on board. Yeah, and, and you, you do, you have to take charge of that. You have to control that conversation or it takes control over you. So yeah. that's, that's what our goal would be there. Okay. All right, and, um, another question we received is, Carnival has some of the most iconic advertising. Kathy Lee, for instance, as you mentioned. Um, how are you using some same appeal and nostalgia as you look toward the next generation of marketing for Carnival? Great question. We hear all the time, especially on social, how much people love that, that old, the old advertising. And, you know, one thing that we've got a unique ability to do in this coming year is celebrate our 50th birthday. And so we see this as the chance to um, really lean into some of that heritage and that nostalgia. Um, to reawaken it among people who were familiar then, but maybe have forgotten about it. Maybe you yeah. haven't forgotten about it. Um, and I think what will happen as a result of that is by, by giving a nod to that history and that nostalgia, but doing it in a contemporary way, not just with Kathy Lee, but I mentioned our other partners, we'll create yeah. a bridge from the past to the future. So we totally embrace it. We think it's great. We love that people call us out for it and remember it. And now we want to see if we can extend that and kind of bridge it, as I say, to, to what we want to talk about going forward. Uh, I will warn you, Pete, that Vance usually listens in on these and you want, might want to be careful about what you say. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He probably is watching, but <laughs> but no, that's really good stuff. And, it, and it's true. I mean, there is, I mean, I can remember uh, when I worked at the pier 100 years ago, um, back in the 80s. 
And uh, I remember when Kathy Lee came, arrived at the port to, you know, go on board to shoot her first commercial on Carnival. I mean, it's definitely, you know, one of those things that you never forget. And she definitely brought, I mean, she definitely put uh, cruising on the map. Uh, her commercials were awesome. And uh, boy, if we could bring her back somehow, that would be cool. Well, well, I think that's, that's a question where we're kind of figuring out. But one thing I will point out is that um, one of the reasons that was so successful back in the day is that we, it was before digital marketing, right? Yeah. Before the internet, before email, before all of this. And we used the vehicles of mass reach to create awareness for our, our brand. We, we created the brand on with television advertising. And I'm yeah. not saying it hasn't changed. It absolutely has changed. But I, I think sometimes we have a tendency in marketing to fall in love with the shiny new objects and the shiny new tech. And we may over rotate towards some of those tactics. Um, one of the things my team is pushing for is a little bit of a return to, if you wanna cast a wider net, you're going to have to go to where those eyeballs are um, and resist the temptation to hyper target yourself. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll see, we'll see if that combined with some really good advertising and messaging is the, is the right formula. I think it is. Okay, cool. All right, and then the last question we received is, this is information, thank you so much. Um, but what are you most excited about as Carnival returns to sailing? Oh gosh, what am I most excited about? I mean, seeing Mardi Gras go out for the first time at the end of July, I think, like I think about it and I don't know, the, the, our, our newest ship, the future of, of the brand and the fleet in a sense. So, so just seeing that, that ship leave Port Canaveral, I think is gonna be um, amazing. I, I, I will also admit I'm ready for a guy, uh, a, a guy hamburger straight yeah. up would be delicious right now. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it's just gonna be a, a pretty awesome and maybe a magical moment when that ship leaves on, uh, on July 31st. I agree. All right, well, Pete, um, I think that uh, that's it for the questions and all we have time for. I do need you to stay on to help me with the last couple of slides since I can't control it. Um, so yeah. if, you can, if you can flip to the next uh, slide. Will do, and thank you again for having me. I appreciate it. No, no, we, we're uh, lucky to have you. Thank you for uh, spending so much time with us and watching me uh, have a meltdown while I was trying to get onto the, uh, <laughs> onto the Zoom thing. Um, I'm sure all the words that I said would have been bleeped. I wasn't sure if you guys could hear everything, but I probably said a few bad words. So anyhow, uh, one of the one of the brands that 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 I love is our Travel Agents Rock, and I think that our travel agents out there love Travel Agents Rock too. So we uh, have a uh, lucky champ. Five five winners are going to get a Travel Agents Rock T-shirt. Those haven't been out for a while. Um, and uh, I know how popular they've, they've been and are. And uh, so what you need to do is, um, oh, Megan's gonna text me, I forgot about this. See, I'm all flustered today because none of this worked right. Winners for the day, sorry. So winners for today are, and what you need to do, by the way, winners, when I say your name, make sure you send an email to trade support at carnival.com trade support at carnival.com. It's this email you see up on your screen. So the five winners are Anna Nieves, April Jolly, Carol Meter, Kathy Kowalski, and Cecilia Russell. So th those are the five winners uh, for the Travel Agents Rock t-shirt. And um, I think that we are done. So Pete, listen, really thank you so much for spending so much time and sharing not only your history, but your vision for Carnival uh, and marketing. And uh, I really think that, you know, I've, I've had the opportunity to be at several of your presentations. And I know that I myself, as well as my team, have always been really impressed with uh, your presentations, your approach to marketing. Um, and, uh, you know, you haven't had that much of a chance to really put your stamp on it because, you know, we've been in this current situation. So we're all 
rooting for you and excited about your future here and how you can help uh, drive business to Carnival and to our travel agent partners out there. So thanks again, everybody. Uh, and thank you, Pete. Um, really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Sorry for the uh, delay. I hope you uh, found this useful and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.